for those who are concerned about the impact of wind farms, particularly in terms of visual amenity, landscape and so on, I'm afraid I feel pretty robust about this. And my message to them is, well, you may see a change in the landscapes that you cherish, but that change is going to be a lot less horrible than the changes we're going to get through extreme climate change. And we all have to understand the nature of that changing, shifting pattern of climate and landscape. So the nimbyism that is still there, if you like, in special places, I admit we shouldn't proceed with onshore wind farms. But for me, most places actually are in game for good, well-designed, well-built wind developments of the kind we're seeing. Brits are justifiably proud of our landscapes and we have more organisations than any other country in the world dedicated to preserving them. But our landscapes aren't static, they've changed and evolved throughout history and no one can deny that wind farms will certainly change the landscape. What we need to look at are the pros and cons of that change. If we don't build wind farms and continue to burn fossil fuels, how will the resulting climate change affect our landscapes? And if we do build them, how can we be sure that they're sited as sensitively as possible? This is probably the most important question of all. Ten years ago there were hardly any wind turbines in the UK and now almost everyone has seen a skyline like this one. So what has brought about this relatively sudden change? Well, there's a number of factors. The first is that the technology has improved and become more economic. So wind has joined coal and gas in the UK's energy mix. But the biggest issue is climate change and we're all beginning to see the effects of that. Now most scientists agree that the root cause of this is the emission of greenhouse gases when we burn fossil fuels and the way to start combating it is to look for alternative fuel sources and increase energy efficiency. In the future, tidal, biomass, wave and solar power will all play a part. But at the moment, the main commercially viable option is wind power. So if we're going to take climate change seriously, we're going to have to take wind power seriously. I don't live near a wind farm, so I can't tell you, but if you do live near a proposed site, then you're going to want to know the answers to questions like, how noisy are they? And the truth is that everyone is going to have a different perception as to what does or doesn't affect their quality of life. But findings in surveys on public opinion do find that most people who initially opposed the building of a wind farm supported it once it was up and running. Now we've got various bits of expert opinion for you on this DVD, but my advice to you would be get down to a wind farm, go and have a look and a listen for yourself. Most wind farm developers will offer visits to people who live near a proposed site. Take up that offer and then you can just make up your own mind. One of the most common arguments against wind farms is that they're not actually economic and it's only a crafty system of subsidies to big developers that make the figures work outright. And what happens when, like today, the wind doesn't blow? Does that mean that all the lights are going to go out? And then there's the claim that you will use more energy building wind farms and connecting them to the grid than they will ever actually generate. Well, all these are valid points and worth consideration. We've got the sums wrong in the past. Just remember, 50 years ago, nuclear energy was going to be too cheap to meter. So we owe it to our children to get things right this time.
As you can imagine, this is an issue that is particularly close to my heart, but it's a debate that demands a clear head as well. The important thing is not just to look at individual wind farms and the effect on the immediate wildlife, but to consider the consequences on wildlife everywhere if we don't reduce the burning of fossil fuels. Now, the development of a wind farm, like any construction site, may have an effect on the local wildlife. But wildlife globally will definitely be affected if we don't build them. Now, the effect on bird life is one of the most contentious issues in the wind farm debate. Even amongst the organisations that are supporting this DVD, there are disagreements over individual sites. All the more reason to continue the debate and cooperation between all of us who love our wildlife. Probably the hardest part of the current debate on wind farms in the UK is balancing the long-term global arguments with short-term local ones. Build a wind farm and a bird might get killed flying into a turbine. Put a wind farm on the edge of one of our national parks and you will change one of our treasured landscapes. However, if you don't build any wind farms and continue using fossil fuels and allow climate change to continue unabated, then what will happen to all our wildlife and all our landscapes? So climate change is such a massive problem that the RSPB is convinced that we, we have to act now as a society and we have to roll out renewable energy and wind energy has to be a very big part of that and we have to do that now if we're going to solve problems for the future. What we're asking the industry is that that happens in the best possible way with the least possible damage to the environment because we have to do this and we need to work together to make sure it's done really well. One of the balancing acts that we have to do as, if you like, as mankind is to balance the costs in terms of visual changes to our countryside with the potential enormous impacts of climate change if it's unchecked. Um, we, we could see the prospect of water wars in many parts of the world, huge numbers of environmental refugees, millions of refugees, and that won't be something that happens the other side of the world and on our television screen. It will have real economic impact here in Britain. I think it really is difficult for people to live in these different time frames with the local and short-term issues about wind and then the very long-term issues about, about climate change. But for me there isn't any proportionality in the way different people respond to these things. They get very upset about some of the short-term local issues and completely disregard the much bigger, much more significant long-term issues associated with climate change. And for me, that's where wind comes into its own. It is going to be an extremely substantive contributor to our energy supply system in this country. It is going to come in at cost. It is going to come in in a very benign way, in my opinion, in terms of impact on people's lives and the environment. And for me, it is the start of a genuine revolution in the way people see energy and the use that they make of it. And that's what excites me about wind power. This is not just a few wind farms scattered here and there around the UK. This is the start of a sustainable energy revolution. And the sooner people get excited about that, the better it'll be. are justifiably proud of our landscapes and we have more organisations than any other country in the world dedicated to preserving them. 